Is it better for a bootstrap company to self-host their applications or use a platform as a service like Heroku, Render or DigitalOcean's app platform? In this video, I'm going to give you my opinion on what you should be considering before deciding on an infrastructure solution. Hi everyone, Ian here. If you're new to my channel, I'm a software developer and I'd like to show you how to build great software through my own tutorials, projects and reviews. If that sounds like a channel that you'd be interested in, then please consider, please consider subscribing. So today I wanted to cover whether you should outsource DevOps for your web apps to a platform as a service as there's been a couple of articles and posts floating around on Hacker News and Twitter recently regarding the tools that solo founders use for running their services. Um, let's define a couple of things first off. Um, if you're doing everything yourself, you're probably familiar with infrastructure services, so IaaS, um, like Google Cloud and AWS, where you can easily purchase compute time to host an application. So considerations on the software you're going to use to host that, the applications, how you're going to manage backups and operate continuous deployment are mostly left for you to decide you have complete control over how things are set up. This is what I'd term self-hosting generally. When I talk about platform as a service, I mean something like Heroku or Render, so a cloud-based service. With these, you move responsibility for both your infrastructure and its middleware to the platform you're using. They ensure your services remain up, that certificates are correctly provisioned and that your backups are regularly saved. You typically work with these using something like Docker or a model view controller framework in your language of choice. Um, the application generally will cost a little bit more to run. Uh, so we're gonna explore some of those costs later as well. So why would you choose to build out all this stuff yourself? Well, if you're a bootstrap company, you tend to be a very small team. Uh, you're typically one or two people. Uh, at the beginning, money might be tight and saving money is generally good. So if you have the time and you are developers yourselves, why not use our skills and save this ongoing cost? Um, another reason might be that as a developer, you're interested in this stuff and you actually want to learn how to do it more. Uh, the, there's a couple of problems with this these approaches. Um, as developers, our estimates are generally all over the place, and so we often overestimate what we think we can do in a day, so our projects generally overrun. That's why stuff often ends up never getting released on time or is delivered with a ton of bugs, so we've seen that frequently. Um, in some cases, you might end up with both, like Cyberpunk 2077 last year. We also have a habit of thinking this approach is cheaper and it saves us uh, you know $70 a month I can build it myself and save the team $800 a year well that's great if the core of your product is an infrastructure platform um, my guess is for the majority of things you're building things for a customer um, and so this isn't the case you have to decide whether or not you're building an application or you're working in operations there's only so many hours in a day. Um, and in the case of a platform as a service, they're gonna have thoroughly tested many edge cases and routes that we can't do ourselves. What we actually do by taking responsibility for DevOps is add additional complexity for us to manage long-term. Uh, you now have to deal with your core product and all the ongoing software issues with that and the infrastructure it sits upon and ongoing support issues with that as well. So the money you save pales in comparison to the costs of managing all this infrastructure ourselves. Let's look at some actual costs. The additional cost is actually pretty minimal for most web apps if you're just hosting a service and database. Um, so hosting for both public and private repos is free now with GitLab, Bitbucket and GitHub. Setting up pipelines are also free on many of these services. So you've got GitHub Actions and Bitbucket and GitLab, GitLab pipelines. Um, hosting for static sites is also free with sites like Netlify. Um, and when you look at these costs, they are fairly minimal. So I'll insert some screenshots here, but a basic web app 
uh, with server, database, automated backups and things like SSL uh, certificates being um, provisions cost $35 a month on render, $75 a month on Heroku and $25 a month on DigitalOcean's app platform. In comparison, you kind of need to compare how much it's going to cost for a DevOps engineer because when you want your product to get big um, and this is who's going to end up eventually needing to manage your infrastructure if that happens. In short, uh, contractors cost a lot more, DevOps engineers cost a lot more. They can cost many hundreds of dollars a day and are in demand, uh, they are very much in demand. So my philosophy is this, the simplest infrastructure you can get away with to serve your purpose is usually best. With bootstrap businesses, your purpose is to deliver your core product features. You don't want to be concerned with tasks that can be made somebody else's problem for next to nothing. Um, this results in less layers of complexity as uh, for your team to manage, less time spent debugging, no horrible late night infrastructure calls, and more time to actually spend on building actual features. And like uh, in a life terms uh, side of things, you've got more time to spend with your family and not get woken up in the middle of the night. Um, we may have lots of time now when initially building a product, but what about the future? You want your application to become successful. You may not have that time in the future. So there's a caveat with some of this, and that is, uh, is the only purpose to build out um, features for your product? It, we want is it only to deliver stuff more quickly if you actually want to learn how to set up complex infrastructure then doing it yourself may be useful to you for instance if your product happens to be tooling for other developers but it will result in a slower time to market for your core product and may well become difficult to distinguish when your learning is getting in the way of shipping features to me, at the beginning of your product journey, that seems like a premature optimization when money is likely really tight. Um, most bootstrappers leverage tools and platforms as services that they know well. Um, bootstrappers like Josh Pigford and Arvid Carl regularly use Heroku. Peter Levels uses a basic PHP server and up until fairly recently had not ever used, been using uh, Git. So you want to focus on tooling that you are familiar with. And if you're learning on the job, learning infrastructure and how to put it together on the job, it's likely not going to benefit your product. You should focus on your strengths. Do you have sufficient skills to understand this additional complexity that you're introducing? Does your current engineering team understand pipelines, Kubernetes, and all the best practices with each of them? Um, you should focus on what is unique about your product. Unless your app is centered around infrastructure, it's probably a waste of time building and focusing on this stuff. So you've heard my opinion on self-hosting your products. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below this video. I'd love to hear what you're currently hosting, what your current hosting setup is and why you've made that particular choice. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, then you can please let me know in the comments. I really enjoy seeing the comments. You can also subscribe for more or like this video. It really does make my day seeing every single new subscriber. Um, yeah, so until next time, I'll speak to you in the next video. Okay, bye.